Hey guys, Eileen Vick here for Teaching Adult Coloring with Eileen Vick. It is 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, March 4th. Alrighty. Zoom in. Zoom out. Alright, just checking everything to make sure we're copacetic. Come on in. We're going to get our coloring on tonight. We're going to have fun. At least I'm going to have fun. I hope you have fun because that's the whole point, of course. You come in here, you relax. We have some giggles. <coughs> giggles, excuse me. We get our coloring on. Hello, Melissa. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. All right. Okay, I saw I saw the hearts and the thumbs up. Thank you. Still working out the bugs in my headset, making sure it's okay. Better than last night. I know. I didn't. Yeah. Well, at least you could hear Ruth very clearly. <clears throat> so what I've discovered is anytime I have somebody come in here, I have to take turn off my headset. Which is fine. A little annoying, but hey, it's worth it. How did you like Ruth in here last night? Was that fun? She is such a sweetheart. <clears throat> really nice lady. Alrighty. I'll tell you what. Melissa, when she showed us around her studio. <laughs> you could have scraped my chin off the floor. That was so nice of her to show that, show works that she was working on. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. Alrighty. Alrighty. So we'll wait for some people to get in the door. Hi, Brooke. I'm really debating. I need to, I'm wondering if I should just come on air at 6.55 and give the five minutes for people to fall in and then just start up at seven o'clock. Hello, Jean. So glad to see you, Jean. Hello, Dawn. I see that thumbs up. So you're agreeing with me, Dawn, about starting at 6.55? Dawn, <laughs> we are so symbotico sometimes, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh. Well, come on in, everybody. Relax. All right. Maddie said that she'll be in here later. She's working on her computer. So she will be in, and let's see, our announcements, of course, Ruth Sanderson, we've got a contest going on, we are in the midst of a, the throngs of a, uh, throws, throws, <laughs> of a contest,
Yeah, we need to... Hi, Lila. I really hope people shared last night's video. You can still go into that video and share it, guys. And then write a little note and say, Coloring Book Artist Ruth Sanderson made an appearance <clears throat> in Teaching Adult Coloring with Eileen Vick. Let everybody know. All right, so we've got our contest with our book from Helen Elliston, our ma mask lady, our steampunk mask lady. That's a big prize, guys, two books. And for those of you that don't have her instruction book that she published, That color special effects, that would be a great prize. All right. So let's get working on some things here. So I checked my mailbox yesterday, finally. I let it go sometimes a couple days. I got to quit doing that, but hey. Kind of got into that habit when all that bad weather moved in here. Hi, Melissa. Again, I said Melissa already. All right, so I got these three books in the mail. And not only... Are they from Ruth? But as I posted last night, she signed them for me, so I thought that was pretty neat. And Lila, which two do you have? The Nursery Rhymes, of course. What's the other one? The Christmas Book? All right, so let me show you this. The Christmas book I've already done coloring out of. Christmas magic and nursery rhymes. Okay, good. So these are my signed editions from the author. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. Okay, Melissa has nursery rhymes, good. And I'm just gonna do a really quick page through. It's such a sweet book. I love this line art, but you know, as Ruth said, it takes her a longer time to do it. And they're all beautiful, put-together scenes. You know that Ruth loves horses. This is sweet because there's several mice hiding in here. One up here, one there, one peeking around the tree. I keep checking over here to look for another one. You did the picture of the mouse on the chair. How come you guys aren't posting this stuff, guys? See? I think you posted that one, though. So I want, I just want to show you this real quick. I would encourage you to get it. It sure doesn't matter that we're getting into the warmer weather, but all of it's fun to color. Let's see here. 
I don't see any my, mice in this one. I could be missing it, but that's me. I'll have to ask Ruth. I love this one. So again, I'm highlighting Ruth Sanderson here tonight. I love this one. The putty tat in the window. Yeah. I did this one as well. It's been posted. Oh, you'll get there, Jean. Little tiny mouse here. How cute. And then she gave a bonus section here. So we have duplicates then to work on. Yeah, and I did this one too. You guys need to go to Instagram. Colorist underscore Eileen Vic. This is so cute. I just love this one. All right, so you've seen all these. All right, so that's that book. And she's got a couple more just in case you're interested. Santa's Merry Christmas, Grayscale, and Merry Christmas, Grayscale. I'm pretty sure I have both of those as well. So yeah, we're in good shape here. Okay. Second book I want to show you is The World of Fairies. This one I do not have did not did not have. Again, signed. Very thick paper, by the way. Oh, didn't notice. Zoom in. This is book number 386 of 1,000. Oh, there we go. Wow. Zoom out. Zoom out. All right. So this is the fairies book. Again, Ruth Sanderson. Okay, wait a minute. Let me see something here. Oh, duplicate. That's different. Okay. That's interesting. I love this. So the duplicate is on the back. Now, the cardstock is, again, very thick. But if you have a printer and a copier, you'll still want to copy it, I'm sure. Oh, little duck with the fairy. Yeah, I haven't I've never seen a book like that either with it with the duplicate on the back. She has since separated them. And as you know, I love pictures that have something going on in them instead of being static. I mean, statics are fine, but when you have something like a jumping rabbit, I think those are so neat.
the little fairy jumping here. And for anybody that just came in, the duplicate <coughs> picture in this book is on the back of the page. Hi, Karen. Beautiful. Oop, hold on. Ah, there we go. A little stiff. Karen, you hanging in there? So, Ruth has beautiful work. She is a prolific artist. Oh, Karen, you need to go back and watch that video. You do know Ruth Sanderson came in for a while, right? Here we have another dancing fairy. Okay, all of these must be sideways. More involved pictures here. Yeah, Karen, you really need to go back and watch it. It was great. She came in just as a pre-visit to her actual appearance. Look at these beautiful... I love these horses. They're so... Um, <sighs> sturdy. <clears throat> I mean, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful horses. Massive horses. It's also up on my YouTube channel as well. And of course, the fairy godmother was Cinderella. coloring family is gathering. Okay, a sneak preview of Fantastic Cats coming soon, which is this one here. And then about the artist. Interesting. And this book is really interesting because these are, here's the center of the book. Let me show you this. And if you look at the end, you see how that opens up here? So the whole page is this way. It's rounded this way. So that's the whole page all the way through. <clears throat> and then it's stapled in the center. So if you pulled this out, you'd have a huge sheet like this. So just kind of interesting. And of course, she's changed the format since then. So that's World of Fairies by Ruth Sanderson. <clears throat> All right. And then, of course, we've got Nursery Rhymes, which, again, I will be showing the night that Ruth is here. Beautiful, beautiful book, uh, pictures here. I'm going to go relatively quickly on this one. This is what, Catkin? Never heard of this. I have a little pussy and her coat is silver gray. She lives in a wide meadow and she never runs away. She'll always be a pussy. She'll never be a cat because she's a pussy willow. Now, what do you think of that? Oh, how cute. Hold 
on. Give me one second. Just have to adjust something with my camera. Excuse me for the wiggle. All right, guys. I'm back. We were bumped. We'll give you a chance to get back in the room. Oh, how annoying. So we'll get everybody back in here. Come on back in, guys. We were bumped. I'm just going to wait now for a few people to get in. So annoying when that happens, but hey, so come on back in. We'll get, we'll get rolling here. Come on back in, guys. The joys of technology. As long as you can hear me, we're okay. We're good to go. No sound. Loud and clear. Okay, Karen says no sound. Lila says loud and clear. Okay. Karen, you might want to pop out and pop back in again. All right. So I, so I showed you the three books in the first section. Let's get our coloring on, guys. Okay. So as you know, I'll be working on several projects. nice door thank you all right so here's what I wanted to show you guys I was playing around with my metallic acrylics this is from Hannah Carl's own Here. Wanda was nice enough to tell me which one it was, and then I managed to misplace it. But then I found it again. This is from Summer Night.
And this is the one that I went ahead and I used the acrylics. All right, so what I did with this is I showed you those acrylic paints that I picked up yesterday, uh, the other day. And this is all metallic paint on this door. So I wanted to show you that. So this is an experiment. And I use different colors of metallics. So I wanted to know what you thought of that. All right, are we hanging up again? I'm not seeing comments going through past. Oh, there we go, love the shine. All right, I got it. How would watercolor work on this? Just fine. And then what I did when I was playing with this, zoom in, zoom in, is I went through and I put the black gate on the, you know, the hinge on the door. And that was simply Sharpie pen. And the reason that I ended up using the Sharpie pen, this is a copy. Why do you ask? This actually is one of the pieces Sharpie pens make your head ache. Oh. The odor. I actually switched over to one of my black ballpoint pens. It's cardstock. I copied it on the cardstock. Now, Lila, you can use your Pilot Pen as well, which is what I'm using down here. Daisy, hello. Let's see if I can get this back. Hold on. There we go. So now I can go through and I can detail this hinge. Now, I have different colored pens. You don't have to use the black if you don't want to, of course.
but I wanted to use this black because I want the contrast. And you can see how beautifully now that's coming out. But again, don't forget, you know, when you've got your different pens here, these are my Pilot G2. This is a red. I've got the blue. I've got the brown. I've got a nice purple. I've got a light blue. So my point being, guys, is don't forget your pens, your colored pens when you're coloring. And the other thing I want to show you too, is when you're making these little curly cues here, you can use your pen on top of the acrylic paint and you can exaggerate the swirl. So let me show you that up here for a second. So see this swirl right here? I just, you can make it a little longer. And then you can even curl it. See how I'm curling that? And I'm curling this one. And I'm curling that one. Everybody see how I'm doing that? And I'm going to show you a little more decorating that I'm going to do on these. You know I'm always getting my mitts into something. Play with your mediums, guys. One of the neat things that I've seen Maddie do is she adds pictures and things to her colorings. All right. Does everybody see that clearly? Take your time. Now, watch how I, Michelle, hi. Watch how I extend this curl. And it works beautifully on top of the acrylic paint. There you go. So actually, when you're going to do stuff like this, you're better off using something like this Pilot. It's the Pilot G607. You know I love doing pen work on my stuff. 
and I want you to do pen work on your stuff. You don't have to be an artist, guys. And with this ink working as well as it does on the acrylic paint, you've got carte blanche to go to town with it. Have any of you ever thought about using ink pen on top of acrylic paint? go the only limits to coloring is the limits I set Lila Bunn that's right Lila post that in the group will you please do it with one of those backgrounds you can do with Facebook Lila, do you know how to you know how to post those backgrounds, right? That Facebook gives you. All right. I want you guys to get away from your standard coloring. Okay, see, now I'm adding a little more of a curly cue on this piece right here. Okay, Lila, so go ahead and post <clears throat> that with a really nice background. Please. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and give this a nice back uh, outline. Hi, Ronnie. Welcome to everybody in the room. Welcome to everybody in the gallery that's watching this. You can go on Amazon, guys, and buy different colored pilot pens to do stuff like this. Thank you, Brooke.
I absolutely don't want you to be afraid of putting in Yeah, Amazon will take a debit. Ava Brown is not a person, but a husband and wife with additional artists. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? Guys, there are so many coloring medias that you can use. And you can really pop your pieces. And everybody gets so hung up on markers and felt tip, well, you know, the fine liners and stuff which I also have, and you guys forget about pens. Okay. Zoom out. It depends on what you buy, Brooke. You just have to go online and look at look at what's available and see what your budget is. Zoom out. Okay. Give me a second here while I check something out. I'm just checking something out, guys.
Yeah, you can do a search on Google as well. Okay. That's what I got. No, this door, this door is from Summer Nights by Hannah Carlzone. Hey Kim, did I say hi earlier? Okay, so I was talking about how acrylic paints take stencils beautifully. So, I found a neat little stencil here that I'm going to put in about the middle of the door. This is the pattern. Kim, good to see you. So I'm just going to pick one part of the stencil Zoom in And I'm going to go ahead and Trace that pattern. And again, guys, this is ink pen right on top of acrylic paint. And excuse my hand, but I have to... You need to keep your pen always straight up and down when you're doing a stencil. And you have to also clean off your pen on your paper towel like I'm doing. And I'm not pressing very hard at all. Now, one of the things that you can do, although I will hand color it, is you can color in the spot while the stencil zoom in. Is color inside the square. But I'm gonna pull this up. Oh, the dollar stores are wonderful. I'm going to switch back over to marker here.
just play with it a little bit. Now I've got a fine tip marker which is acting a little problematic for me so if you need to switch off to something like your pen, you can go ahead and do that as well. I was actually using too fine of a, of a Sharpie and it wasn't cooperating. Zoom out. Now, depending on the design, you don't want to go nuts with your stenciling. It's all to your own taste. But I wanted to show you that you can make these additions. Zoom in. There. Zoom out. So there's an idea for you. And the concept here that I'm showing you, two things. You can expand with a pen, for example, on the acrylic paint. And you can add stencil. Well, sometimes plain is good. And I saw your comment earlier that you said too much on the door. But yeah, you know, personal taste. Let 
me pop my stencils back in the bag before I slide them all over the place. Ziploc bags, guys, are great. And then I saw a post about putting the Ziploc bags inside of a uh, <coughs> notebook uh, insert for paper. Now, in this case, this door is supposed to be the ironwork on the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this black portion that I just put in the center just to give it a little cohesiveness. And a sense of it all being one grill work, you know, ironwork on this door. Now again, personal taste. And it decides how much that you want to add. Yeah, that was it. Using the binder with the plastic sleeves. Thank you. That was it. Thank you, Lila. With colored paper behind to put the stencils in. And then the only other thing that you need to do is just make sure that your black is the same color all the way through. Zoom in. So, I don't know if you can see it on camera. And I'm not going to do the whole thing, but because I did this part of the black in marker, it's a little bit different color than the black from my ink pen. So just make sure that that is the same all the way through, okay? And black pen on top of marker looks works beautifully because you've got that surface there to work with the ink. Can you guys see that on camera that the black is a little bit different color? And the thing is, as you color, you'll become more and more sensitive to colors. <clears throat> yeah.
Not really? Okay, well good. I can see it up close. All right. So let me finish one extension real quick. So for anybody that just came in the room, we're talking about black ink on top of acrylic paint. This design was already on the door and I just expanded it. And made it a little more elaborate and then I used a stencil to add that center part now having done that remember that there is joy in simplicity so you don't have to add all this for the ironwork. I mean, I know you know that. But sometimes when you just feel like you want to do something like that, this is the way to do it. Zoom out. There you go. So we use metallic acrylic paint black pen, black marker, and a stencil. Okay. Different. Now, the other quick thing I wanted to show you is when I put the acrylic paint on as well, and again, I was playing, I blended some colors, I put bronze, I put gold, I put a copper color, <clears throat> that's why the store has so many shades on it, and then just before the acrylic paint dried, I took a toothpick and I scraped in the panels where the panels would go together so that's why you're seeing also those marks Zoom in, zoom in, and again, you know, if this, if this isn't your cup of tea, that's fine, but what I want you to see is the method with the idea of you can apply this to other things that you're working on. I'd like you to get used to working to using an ordinary pen to do some of your coloring, especially the black. And again, you've got the different colored pens that you can use as well. Okay, so that orange is looking pretty flat. So I'm going to pop in now. Hi, Dawn. So I'm going to put a little brown over that orange. 
just to tamp it down a little bit and weather it a little. Always good to see you, Dawn. And then I'll go ahead and use that brown around the keyhole. And then to match with what we're doing with the rest of the door, I'm going to go ahead and just outline that in black. I really don't want the door handle to interfere with the rest of the pattern. And then when that ink dries, I may put a little color inside of, yeah, it does. It looks like one of those old glass or brass knobs. Yep, yep, exactly. Now, I've got a little gold that I missed here. I'm just going to take my brown pen, <clears throat> brown pencil, excuse me, and just cover that real quick. And again, guys, I was just playing on with this. Zoom out. Zoom out. Anybody have any questions or comments about the technique? Let me grab some water here. Zoom out. Metallic acrylic paint on the door. Oh, you colored hair today. Excellent. All right. So, now I'm inclined to color the concrete. Lila, you need to post what you're coloring. At the moment, I'm going to go ahead and give my concrete a gray tint. And at the very bottom of that door, I see one little gap here. I'm going to go ahead and just color that in right there with the brown. Zoom in. Oh, your pieces for the contest. Okay. How did it go with the hair? 
Are you proud of your work? Now, concrete, I like to shade with a little bit of blue. That just gives it way more depth. Good. I'm glad you're proud of it. Good. I want you guys to think outside of the box. And sometimes the problem with coloring is people will see ways that certain artists do it and then they'll mimic that way and they'll really never... <laughs> Yeah, you can watch the next day, Ronnie. It, all, it always goes to video. So people watch a certain artist and then they just start coloring that way and then they tend to get stuck in a rut. So that's why I show you these different methods. Now, we've got a lot of greenery and or flowers on the outside here. Zoom out. So this is where also, now see how nice that concrete looks? And then what I like to do is go back over the blue with my gray. Depth, dimension, detail, right? Zoom in. And as Lila said, Ronnie, when you share the, the video to your timeline, you can watch it anytime. Now, does that concrete not look a lot better with that, that gray and then a little blue and then a little gray on top of that? Okay, so what I started to say and see, I think that still has just a little bit too much blue yet. So I'm just going to swipe it with my gray. So there's a really neat way to color concrete and stone, gray and blue. All right. So we've got an edge now of this concrete here on the outside. And this is where your tinting gets really important. I'm just coloring this a light gray. There you go, Lila. Yep. Yeah. When I was in engineering school, we um, we had projects with concrete as well. So I'm just going to tint now the gray on the outside of this door so I can see it. And then I can start making decisions. <clears throat> about what else I want to color. 
and how I want to color it. And that's why I always, let's see what we got here. Flowers, okay. <clears throat> that's why I always tell you, don't be afraid to move around your piece. Some people will start and go top down or left to right or right to left or whatever, or down and then up. Now, I, don't ha I didn't have to make this gray and concrete. I could have come in with a different color if I wanted to, of course. And for the moment, I'm avoiding coloring over those round circles here. And notice I'm holding my pencil, what, from the, near the top, halfway <coughs> to the top. Or what I was saying, what I meant was at the halfway point or cl closer to the top. Don't pound your pencils into the paper, guys. Let your repeated strokes darken for you. Yeah, I could have had it, right, look like sandstone, yeah. And actually I still could with this underlying gray. Hi, Wanda. Exactly, Lila. By holding your pencil up near the top, it basically prevents you from jamming your pencil into the paper. So my whole deal here is I don't want you to get into a coloring rut based on a specific artist's style. And that's why I show you these different techniques and how to do stuff. Doing okay, Wanda. Thanks for asking. I am using my headset tonight. Why? Is it not evident or what?
My headset should be making me sound very clear. But like I found out last night with um, Ruth, I have to disconnect it. She sounded clear, I sounded far away. Okay, anybody else having a hard time hearing me? Okay, Wanda says it's very clear. Ronnie, you may need to pop out and pop back in again. Okay, so now we've got this concrete area outlined. Zoom out. Zoom out. So now that I have lightly outlined the gray, or tinted the gray here, or whatever color you want to make this, now I'm really starting to see the lay of the land. So one of the things that I'm looking to add to this, but well, wait, there's more. Is so I want to go ahead and Okay, and that's fine, Lila. It's it, it, if you have to hold it to closer to the lead for better control. I mean, you've got to figure out that point where it's really comfortable. If you do hold it closer to the lead, then you need to be not pushing your pencil hard into the paper, which is what a lot of people do. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, zoom in, is I'm going to go ahead and add some light lines now to indicate the stone that's held up as blocks. And you can either add these right next to each other, or you can go ahead and add just one or two. And I'm doing this in pencil so I don't screw it up. And then I'll come back and ink it.
Are you guys aware that that a lot of times Johanna Bosford will do pencil first before she does her drawings? So what you want to do now is just go through and add your different blocks. Ronnie, let me give you a specific def def definition. Burnishing involves layering and blending until no paper tooth shows through the colored pencil layers. The same sequence of colors is then relayered over the entire colored area. The process is repeated until the colored pencil areas completely cover the paper beneath them, allowing no tooth to show. That's right, you have layer and layer upon color, that's right. Here's the definition on Google here if you want to look it up. You can take a shot of that on your screen to save it. Yeah, when you push your color so hard in your paper, you, you, you can't do anything else with it. That's why I keep telling you guys to work on tinting first, what I call tinting.
Now, I know you can't see these lines, but what I'm doing is I'm just making the concrete block. all the way through my piece here. Zoom in. And that's the whole point of tinting is it allows you to continuously play with how you want to color the entire piece. The minute you the minute you start a project and you darken in an area you completely take away your ability to redesign it you're down right I taught you that Okay, so we guesstimate, we got maybe one there and one there. I'm going to go ahead and put a line, zoom out. I'll go ahead and put a line here. Everybody see now how we have some really neat blocks now in this little puppy. And then this is where I take my pen and I match the pen that I choose to the weight of what the artist has drawn in their lines. You don't want your added lines to be darker than what the author put in. Otherwise that would look really weird. And keep in mind, because we're doing this over pencil, I mean, we could have done this before I colored. But, when I added the gray, I thought, you know, that would look really cool if I went ahead and put in these blocks. And again, to clean your pen, you just wipe it off on your paper. Teacher's pet. Oh, brother. Here we go. Oops, went a little past that. Oh, well. And the neat thing is, is because this first set of lines is in pencil, if you need to change and adjust, you sure can. What did you learn in school today? Sharing.
I know want to share. Sharing is caring. <laughs> Zoom out. Oh, you guys. Uh, 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 look how cool this is looking. Excuse my hand again. And again, you can just adjust your lines because we did them in pencil. So if you screwed it up, you can change it, right? Zoom in. Zoom in. Now, remember on the detail here that even though I've got a lot of leaves coloring this concrete, I'm still drawing my lines in between the few that I can. That gives you that authenticity. So I'm eyeballing right here that a line would have been just about in the center, so it doesn't matter. Good night, Pearl. Good night, Pearl. Good night, Pearl. Good night, Pearl. So glad you could come in tonight. All right. So now let's play with some concrete block. Yeah, we need to, okay. All right, Wanda, we'll do that. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Zoom in. You were live in Indiana earlier tonight. What does that mean? A little bit of light blue in here. See that? I'm going to tinge that with my blue. And except for that one splotch right there, it's so light you'll hardly see it. And then I'm going to come back over it now with my, with a darker gray. So we want to dirty up this concrete block with our splotches of gray, okay? Oh, I see. So I've got light gray, light blue, and then my darker gray. 
And then to blend all that in, I can go back with my lighter gray. Lose the boulder holder, yeah. All right, hold on, I need to sharpen. Oh, no, I don't, excuse me. And then what I wanna do is, I just wanna make sure you want this to be more streaky than blotchy. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend that just a little bit. All right. Now, notice on my next block, zoom out. I'm going to go ahead and angle my, this is my lighter gray. I'm going to angle that streak across both. See that? Put a little dark in there. A little bit of blue. And then come back with my lightest gray over that blue all right now I specifically want you to see here that when you're coloring between these two these different concrete blocks you don't want to confine your concrete marks just to one block, okay? By spreading it around like this, it makes it look more realistic. And you can vary your shades of gray You don't have to use your dark gray each time. You can just shadow with it. Oh, I'm glad you hear me in your head hearing that, yeah. Now, this time I'm going to go in with my darkest gray first. See how I'm streaking that? Ronnie says she hears me about turning the pencil. <laughs> Yay, it's getting through. A little bit of the blue, a little bit of the light gray. Now, I don't want you to get too stylized when you're doing this stuff. Meaning, well, I put a streak in these two, I gotta put it in the other ones, no.
if you if you get too uniform with your stuff it's going to show so you need to change it up a little bit eileen has become an earworm <laughs> right now I do want you to think about what you're doing when you're coloring but I don't want you to overthink it okay I've got a line missing right there Oh, let's see here. Um, yeah, some people, Ronnie, have said that you can, they've had success putting broken pencils on a heating pad. If you're sharpening a pencil and it keeps breaking and breaking and breaking, you know, popping out or falling out or whatever, then that's a good thing to try. Now, on this particular block here, I'm going over it with a darker pencil, just because. I'm going to put a little blue in there. And then come in with my darker pencil here. Now, what I'm also starting to do yep, leaving the yep, leaving them sitting in the sun if the weather's warm enough.
All right. So now we've got random gray up and down here. Random gray. Doo -doo. All right. Line them up under your electric blanket. I actually have a, a heat, um, heating pad that I sleep on, which I absolutely love, and the cats love. All right, so now I'm going to take my very dark gray. And I'm going to edge. this concrete all the way down. Turning my pencil, of course, as I go. And I'm also going to do it on the other side, wherever that pops up. Note it now. Look how I did this hinge. Zoom in. Zoom in. Okay, so notice how I darkened by that hinge and then I came out to a point. See that? And that gives a little character to the piece. Now, I'm going to add a couple of marks going the other way. As well on the concrete on the yeah, concrete block. So we're going to vary that a little bit. I'm going to blend it just a little bit to soften that. Good night, Michelle. Zoom out. Because if the lines are too sharp, they're going. It's going to make the, this look like metal. All right. Now we're going to take a little bit of brown. Zoom in. This is a burnt okra. Mm. 
Actually, that's a little lighter than I want. I switched to an Arteza Expert uh, Chocolate Brown. And I'm going to scuff this up now a little bit. And that way we don't confuse the concrete with metal. Zoom out. And you just need just a really light overlay of it. And you've got a really, really cool outline. Yeah, dirt. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and then the other place that you want to add that brown is in the seams here. Because that way, that's where your dirt is going to accumulate. And again, don't be too uniform when you do it. Dirt is not uniform, right? Zoom out. And I'm also coloring over my dirt lines a little bit too, just to smudge that. And again, guys, you will definitely you'll you'll get it as you color as you start to color this stuff. Your eye will start to see. what you think concrete looks like. And then you'll find yourself naturally coloring it that way.
And again, notice that I'm varying the direction of the gray. Hey, Jean, that reminds me, how's Marilyn doing? She doing okay? This is from Summer Nights. Hannah Carlson. You're welcome. All right. Zoom in. Your cat just spilled your coffee. Oh, no.
So now I'm going to go back up to the top and we're going to blend in that edge just like I did from the bottom. And if you look at the, the book here where the artist put in the marks of the concrete, good night, Jean. Zoom out. Looking pretty good. And if you have any areas that you need to blend in just a little bit more, lightly take your blender pencil and blend that in a little bit. And now think about this. When we've got the green going here on the outside and the flowers, that's really going to make a difference with this. Color those black lines. That's right. Hey, the black lines start off your, your blending color for you. There we go. Yay! I think we're looking pretty good, guys. Okay. I think I'm going to pop over now to the kiss. We've got about 35 minutes to go.
Well, I'm glad you like the lines on there. Yeah, that is. That's looking pretty cool, isn't it? And again, once we start up on those flowers, that's going to look neat too. Canadian publisher announcement? What's that? Oh, no, 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 no. I thought you were talking about a contest. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So I'm, I've got my uh, Brute Funner 141 color here. going to do a little bit of house cleaning here. I don't know when I'm going to announce it yet. So I don't want to distract from the blue dress here that we've got because she's front and center. So I'm going to go ahead and do a nice purple here. on the dress. Zoom in. So I'm going to tint with my very light purple.
And then I'm going to go over that purple with Shades of a light aqua blue, or oh, turquoise blue, excuse me. And then I'm going to use my white blender pencil. To soften the whole thing. Excuse me, not white blender pencil. White pencil. And you can see now that by combining these two colors, it gives us a really nice pinkish blue. Look how pretty that color is, guys. Zoom out. Zoom out. And then I am going to go black back black back with my purple and start to shade that little puppy in. Zoom in. So I'm going to shadow in my creases and my edges.
and I'm just going to go purple with this all the way just to just to give it the, some nice contrast And then, of course, don't be afraid to blend over with your fingers because that gives it really nice softness. All right. So we're going a darker line on the creases and blending that in. Turning the pencil as we go. Yep, everyone must be coloring. That's right, they're working on their masterpieces for Sunday. All right, now notice that this looks pretty streaky, right, because of the folds and we've got a lot of light color here in between. So this is where we're going to take the very end of the pencil and give it an overall coloring here. You want this to look as smooth as possible to give it that nice fabric look. Now, I've got a little roughness right here. So I'll go back with my white pencil here. Now, the bottom of this looks a little more purple. I use a Linkyo, L-I-N-K-Y-O. 
If you go to Announcements, Ronnie, click on Announcements, there's a list of four products that I use. And the Linkio is one of them. Everybody see how fabricy? I love my 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 uh, Linkyo L I N K Y O. Absolutely love it. You're welcome, Ronnie. All right, and then I'm going to grab my black pen and. color in that belt Cool. Zoom out. And then on her shoes, let's see, so strap heels. I think we'll just go with a really nice purple here. Actually, I think I'm going to go, not nah, purple. Zoom in. Zoom in. Our women's shoes, we can be a little more colorful. And I'm gonna go ahead and shade that just a little bit around our edges. and half on the top there. See that, how that makes that really look neat as a shoe? And then I will Take my blender pencil. Sorry for the movement around. Here we go. And lighten that a little bit. And blend it. Or not lighten it, blend it. Excuse me. And if you lose your shadowing or shading, just go ahead and pop that back in. Now 
pretty cool here. And let's see the heel. Yeah. Little bit of shading here. Darken it right there. Yeah. Zoom out. Zoom out. Now, she's got on nylons as well. And by the way, I just want to blend this a little bit more right here. Just to soften that up, I'm using the side of my blender pencil. Remember guys, we want this to be as, as realistic as possible. And as you see things in your colorings, it is never ever a failure to have to go back and adjust. So I'm gonna take my white pencil, zoom in zoom in and I'm going to go over the skin just a little bit just to lighten that up just a tad And on this eyebrow here, I'm just going to get rid of that white because I got it over there. There we go. My color points keep breaking. Perfect. Zoom out. Much better.
So I'm going to go ahead and color up this lady's hose. Zoom in. Zoom in. And I'm deliberately using a different brown so that I don't copy this one here. And then I'm going to go ahead and follow the author shade lines. I'll go ahead and darken in that just a little bit. Hi, Maddie. Maddie, I'm going to be on for like 10 more minutes. Okay, now, everybody see how I am shading in that edge? I'm coloring over that black line. I'm adding a little bit of an extra line here just for dimension. And then we're going to darken it around the shoes. Okay. So let's go ahead and get her skin colored.
Lila, you'll be just fine on steampunk. Oh, Maddie. Well, at least you found out. Good night, Ronnie. I'm only going to be on for about five more minutes. Okay, so now I'm going to... shade my skin. Remember, we put down our initial color. And we blend that in. And you can either use your blender pencil or your white pencil to soften and blend that skin color. And then I'm going to go ahead and, which picture are you talking about, Wanda? The steampunk? Blend over with the white. Got a little bit up into the hair here. Go 
going to add a little bit blush of pink. I'm going to go to my markers and use my very, very fine point on the lips. And I'm going to use my very, very fine point. Well, apparently Wanda, when she started to connect, she found out, I mean, it wouldn't connect. And she found out that she had, um, her computer was infected, had a virus. Zoom out, zoom out, there we go so far. So there we go. Now, again, guys, remember, everything goes through an ugly phase. We're getting our people in here. You can't run it by hi-fi, Maddie? Or Wi-Fi? I think we're in really good shape with this particular picture. Everything's coming together. I'm very, I'm happy with it. I don't know yet what this person is. We got to figure out what shape that is. Yeah, you should be able to connect to your printer with your Wi-Fi, with your, with your, um, I'm thinking with your modem. Yeah, you should be able to connect wirelessly to your phone and print from your phone. Do you have an iPhone, Maddie? Yeah, that could be a construction worker in the background. Maddie, if you have iPhone or Android, either one.
What kind of phone do you have? When my when I got my HP printer, okay, Maddie, and what what you have a Canon printer? Good night, Melissa. So, Maddie, there should be in the instructions. It should tell you to download probably a Canon app. And what that app does is it connects you to your printer. That way you don't have to worry about a cable. I had to download an app. Okay, that's fine. All right, guys. Good night. Have a great evening. Hope you had fun doing both projects tonight. Again, there's our door that we did. And the kiss that we did. Zoom out. Lots of fun. All right, guys, have a great evening. Joyous, joyous coloring, guys. Take it easy. All right, guys. Bye.